live from the great state of Texas. I'm going to let everyone introduce themselves. Hi, I'm Kayla. <laughs> I'm Holly. <laughs> I'm Ann. And I'm Marie, of course. Thank you so much for your patience. Yo, we have such a fun show for you here today because we have two very special guests in the studio in preparation for three days of what I think is going to be just an amazing felting workshop, which I get to take, so I'm super excited about Ooh. this. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to try to. <laughs> anyway, so we're going to say hi to a few people, but y'all, what's going on today? What are y'all up to? Prepping for the workshop. Yeah. yeah, lots of prep. Yeah. Lots to do, lots to do. And outside right now, I wish I could share this picture with you on my phone. Han Fairy Hannah is helping a customer, but her parents are outside planting our flower boxes. Mm -hmm. It's got to be like 102 they outside or something like that. Too, and yeah. they showed up like two garden fairies with a big truck. <laughs> yes. A big truck full of dirt and another vehicle full of plants to plant. So I'm going to share a picture later today so y'all can see what they did just to beautify us for the time yeah we're so touched for that so we want to say thank you to them and thank you guys for being here we're gonna have a good show happy wednesday everybody thank you so much for joining us we're gonna say hi to some people i see some of our friends in uh, sweden are here i see there's judy in tennessee uh, hi judy hi ann we see there's sammy she says sound so i think y'all should be able to hear us now right Otherwise, they would have, <laughs> you guys already would have let us know. Um, let me see who else is here. There's Jennifer Lynn McMullen. She says, yes, she can hear us now. And Wendy gives us a big hooray. Um, there's Patricia. Yeah, y'all, so we have some show and tells today. So let me tell you what today is. Today, we have two very special guests. Our resident BFF, Kimberly Pulley, is all the way here from Pennsylvania, and she brought some amazing artwork to share. She's come to take the workshop with a lot of our other friends, and so she brought some of her beautiful wall hangings. And then after you get to meet Kimberly, then we'll introduce you to Pam DeGroote, who of course came all the way from Australia to teach this class, and we're super excited about it. Um, she's teaching dimensions and textures, which is just going to be a wonderful experiment in shapes and forms, and we're just so glad that she came all the way to teach us. So without further ado, y'all give me a big BFF welcome for Kimberly Pulley. I want to see like your hugest rounds of hearts. Come on in here, girlfriend. Yay! Hi, guys. <laughs> so, come on right here, right here, right here. We're so glad you're here. So tell me, now this, you picked, before we do your wall hangings, you picked this workshop out of the sea of workshops that we have this year. And you do a lot of 2D, but you've been experimenting with some 3D. So tell us why you picked this workshop. I've been workshop. failing at 3D. <laughs> <laughs> um, because I have seen um, Pam's work before, and I have seen the, her famous splash. And I knew that um, she would teach us some elements that maybe I can overcome um, what I'm having trouble with on mm -hmm. um, making something solid and dimensional mm -hmm. and I especially want to do the face yeah but I can I don't have the money nor the access to go to Europe to be with Gladys <laughs> <laughs> so um, I know Pam can teach me what I need to learn. Mm -hmm. In yeah. fact, she already gave me a pointer outside. <laughs> so now, tell, now, for those of you, for those who don't know you, because some people are joining us for the first time, so just share with them how long you've been making felt and a little bit about how you got started. Um, right up there. I saw something online. I was looking at art, and I saw something online that said needle felting. And I didn't know what that was. So I looked it up and A, B, C led me to Marie and Living Felt. Um, so then I started watching Wooly Wednesdays, I believe, um, and I did a pair of mittens. <laughs> and um, she gave me a prize <laughs> at the end of the week. Now, you, you did these amazing mittens with this beautiful floral pattern. I'm gonna have to find that picture. Yeah, it was really free-spirited and beautiful. So um, yeah. I just kept going. I, I did a lot of failures, but I kept watching faithfully Wooly Wednesday. Whenever Marie or anybody online would give me helpful hints, I listened to them. And that's all you can do, because I've only been doing this for like three years mm -hmm. and gotten this far. Yes, I have a painting background. Yes, I'm an artist. Um, you know, I've been taught. But as far as the wool, you guys can do it too. You just have to pay attention. You have to do the Wooly Wednesdays. You, because A B C does lead to D, and it, and you can interpret it the way that you want to. All her lessons, you don't have to do them like hers. 
Um, mm -hmm. So, do you want to show some of your stuff? Sure. Okay, so I'm going to turn down here, and. So when I was in school, I took West African art. Now, if I had known about Ethiopia and the Omo Valley, I would have studied that instead. But no, I studied West African art. So I did find out about these guys, and um, they fascinated me um, with their floral headdresses and everything and their face painting. So I did, I've been doing a series of these, and I'm not done with them yet. Um, so this is one of them. And it does have 3D flowers, which didn't show up in the... Um, the pictures that I posted online, um, but it has everything in the kitchen sink in here. There's um, <laughs> silk, pre-felts, um, naps, um, sari silk, hankies. <laughs> I have everything in here, and um, locks. There's just a stream of hearts, oh. and um, Linda Crouch Repkin says, so amazing. Maria Svensson says, it's gorgeous. Thank you. Um, and Lily Franklin says, oh my gosh. <laughs> and Jane Hall uh, echoes your sentiment. She says, listening is everything. Uh, Pam Blackmer says, love, love, love your work. Thank you. Thank you very much. And, you know, this community is awesome. Like the love and support that you guys give and um, you guys are willing to share knowledge because I wouldn't have gotten this far without you guys either. Um, now, talk, before we switch to your next one, just talk a little bit about what you use in your in your pieces. Maybe from you know the background up, just to, mm -hmm. just for people who've never seen it before, just a little intro to kind of your process. What I do is I use the core wool. Um, that saves a lot of time and effort. So I'll lay that down, wet it, flatten it, and then I'll put the merino on. And normally it's white merino because um, you can't really see a color in there. Um, then I lay down my silks. I decide where I want my silks and I'll briefly lay out um, the outline of the figure that I'm going to do. Um, and then I'll do my, my pre-felts. And all the embellishments that you see here, um, I'll lay them out also because I need to. And then I'll wet felt the whole thing. So I'll wet felt it to where it's pre a, like a medium pre-felt where it's all holding together but my naps aren't falling off or anything, where I can still see where the silk is holding, but it's a little loose. Um, and then I'll start needle felting it. And um, you can see, like some, I come back afterwards sometimes when I lose things, because I, I know a lot of you get concerned when I lose things. And why do I do the third or the second wet felting? Well, I do it on purpose, because I, I want to make sure all these things are integrated and that it's a hard felt when I'm done with it so nothing's going to fall off of it because I do want to sell them and I don't want the customer saying hey this fell off this fell off this fell off so a quality product um, but I also I know people keep asking me why why am I losing like the color quality um, by doing that second wet felting and to be honest with you I make a lot of mistakes <laughs> so I might find out that my face is too wide and I need a little bit more silk right here or I might find that oh yeah I wanted to put the silk integrated in her face or something and I forgot to do that when I'm needle felting I can add all that in because I have the raw wool again underneath it and so when I wet felt it it'll actually snag it it'll actually hold on to it and keep it and um, I'll have a finished product so that's I do that sacrifice on purpose um, because I'm not perfect. I make a lot of mistakes. Um, so this one is Iris. Um, this is Camilla's uh, daughter. I always I like her to model for me a lot. Um, I'm going to ask her when I see her this weekend to model some more for me. Um, but I, I just like her face. I like um, her spunkiness. Um, she's very, very spunky, full of um, life, and she's a lot of fun. So I do her a lot, and this one also I added the 3D flowers. Now I'm going to be honest with you, Marie's not in here. I might cut it. I, I don't think it adds to the picture. I think Iris is so strong that I can cut this and get rid of all of that because um, Iris has been done very, very strong, and I don't think I need all these other elements. But I'll let Camille decide that. And then I have this Omo Valley one which honestly I wasn't going to finish. Um, I didn't like her in the beginning, um, but I'm glad I did because I think she turned out to be one of the strongest pieces I've done. Um, but this one I used, 
I don't know how to pronounce that word, but a silk gauze antime, um, which is another form of silk. And um, I have it also here. There's a silk gauze. That's that pattern right here. Um, this is just silk chiffon. I made pre-felts of leaves, and if you notice that there's um, ropes that I've integrated into it, but I also integrated silk into my ropes. Um, I learned how to make ropes with and get the silk to stick. Um, I have um, hemp, and I have that's hemp also, and locks and neps. Um, and hankies. So that's, that's this. Oh, and the Angelina in the eyes. That was the first time I did that. And I really think it made a big difference. And that's my pieces. Wonderful. Yeah, the Angelina in the eye, when I first saw it, that was the first thing that popped out of me. I was like, whoa. <laughs> it adds a wonderful layer of, of dimension. Can we scoot it down a little bit? When you were pointing out the silk, it, it didn't, it was just off frame. I'm going to zoom in on those eyes too. Okay, was that okay? Mm -hmm. Let's do yes. that. I'll have to come back out. Let me count. Did you explain, did you needle felt the Angelina in there? I did needle felt the Angelina, and then after I wet felted it, I have to go back in and needle felt it again because um, it got too tight and it sucked it in. <laughs> you, so you had to add some more Angelina mm -hmm. on top? I did. It's incredible, Kimberly. She's beautiful. Thank you. And then um, I told him I taught myself a new technique of um, integrating silk into ropes. Oh, I've done that too. I love that. Yeah. Necklaces. Mm -hmm. That's so awesome. It's beautiful. Thank you. Oh, not three. So let me, let, let's just, let's just switch back up. So. Oh, okay. This so is cotton. This mm -hmm. is cotton balls from your aspirin. <laughs> <laughs> so you're in town till when? How long are you here? Till Tuesday. Yeah, you're staying over for a little while. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what are your plans while you're in town? Um, making pre felts with Camille. <laughs> <laughs> and also, Iris said she'd model for me. <laughs> Iris, yeah, uh -huh. Camille, Cammy's daughter. Yes. That's so nice. We're just so happy to have you here, of course. Thank you. I can't wait to spend some days with you. Oh, I love it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank Big you. Big round of hearts. Amazing. I'm going to heart you too. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I know that, that probably seeing these works up close is going to give you a new appreciation for Kimberly's work. I absolutely, some of you know that my husband and I own a few of her pieces ourselves. I have one in my office. If you ever come visit, you can see it. I have one in my home and soon to be a second. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm so happy about so I know um, we're hoping that maybe we can get her to come back next year and teach a class. That would be lovely. So our guest now is Pam DeGroote, who's come to visit us all the way from the Blue Mountains of Australia, which I have never been. Um, and many of you know Pam is so well known for her amazing forms and textures, but she does clothing and practical, useful items as well and develops some amazing techniques. So we're so pleased to have her come and share with us. So come on, give us a big round welcome for Pam. Hi. Yay! <laughs> so glad to have you here. Yeah. We great. got to spend like one day together mm -hmm. in this. She's embracing the heat of Texas, right? Because <laughs> it's. Well, it's winterish yeah. where you are. It's been snowing back home, so is it yeah. hot enough for you here? It's very hot. This is the worst <laughs> of it. <laughs> so, Pam, tell us now. You shared with me that you were a potter yes. in, a, in a past life. So, tell us a little bit about how you came to fiber. Maybe what drew you in? Okay, so I was a, a potter for quite a quite some time. I had my own business um, selling pottery mm -hmm. at home, um, but then I also had three young children mm -hmm. and yeah so the kiln would sort of need to go till three o'clock in the morning oh. and the kids would be up at five or six oh. it just wasn't working for me so I just needed to find something that I could work on and put down and you know work on and put down and right. with the small children and I had a friend who was getting into textiles and doing a little class so I just went along to that and felting was part of that and mm -hmm. I just got drawn more and more to the wool mm. and then yeah just really started to focus on felting and all the other little elements I learned in textiles I still use Apply in my them. work mm -hmm. yeah and you but have more freedom probably in, in fiber than you did in clay 
everything. Yeah, but they've got really, I find those really mm -hmm. similar qualities. Mm -hmm. Is that that change from something sort of sloppy and muddy to something right. hard and <laughs> and firm and, and, and holds its shape. And the same thing happens with the wool. So mm -hmm. I like that transformational quality that it has. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah it's mm -hmm. good. And so you come here to teach us a three day class. I you kind of got to pick. And you're, you also have this class online. I do. For I people. do. Yeah. And yeah. so we'll, we'll, you know, we'll share a link of that after for those of you who didn't get to come because some of us had taken that class yeah. but we still wanted to <laughs> get the hand the hands That's on right. it's you. always nice to say that someone yeah. does and, yeah. Yeah. yeah and you travel and teach you've tried what, yeah. what are some of your favorite places you've ever traveled to to teach oh i mean i've i've been to europe a few times and i've been over here this is the fourth time i've been over mm -hmm. to the states mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I love it. It's great. I get to meet so many people. Everyone's felting people are the best in the world. Aren't They're they? all so lovely. <laughs> um, I don't know how we manage that, but somehow we just have to get the best people coming in. I don't know. It's this, the softness of the wall brings the beautiful soft hearts. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, we really you know, have a great time together. And I just, um, I learn as much as I give, I feel, mm -hmm. from my yeah. students. Mm -hmm. I learn a lot about all sorts of things, uh, but also in felting because people just take it in so many different directions. Yeah, I yeah. agree. I think that's always a good, the mark of a good teacher so who recognizes the learning opportunity and mm. the teaching. I agree. Mm. And now you brought some show and tells I to have. share with us. Okay, so I'm going to help assist, assist with that. <laughs> well, let me get this. And so we're going to start here. Yeah. All right, I'm going to switch uh, the cameras over. So we've got, one second. first of all, um, this is one of the this is the first item that we teach in the online class and this is called the splash so this is all about using um, the directionality of fiber and then also the placement of fiber as well um, it has a different reaction depending on which direction it goes to mm -hmm. and and then also the placement of the fiber as well so this actually starts completely flat yes and it is totally due to the placement and the direction of the fiber but it ends up as a bowl and a splash. So these are really kind of fun, mm -hmm. really fun. And then there's lots of other little techniques in here about how to make things stand up and get little balls on the end of your stems and what have you, which could be a flower, could be anything that you're right. putting onto the end. Yeah. So we learn all of that in that class as well. Yeah, and you, you developed that technique yourself. Yeah, the splash, yeah. Mm -hmm. So this actually sort of came about, there's, uh, I don't know how many people are here are involved in Felt United, um, which is an online gallery mm -hmm. each year. And so the, one of the themes was water. And so I just thought, oh, well, I'm going to make right. a splash of water. We, we did a group exhibit last year, some of the pieces you see out there, but we had over 40 pieces, I think. Mm -hmm. So we did a group community exhibit. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, and hung them. And now they're sort of waiting their turn because they were all hanging before. Mm -hmm. but, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Water. Yeah. Okay, so... They, uh, Brenda Nelson says, I have to try a splash, and we see very cool, so fun. People are very excited about that. Oh, they want to see them from a side view, so would you yeah, turn them a yeah. little bit? And, um, so, yeah, this is yeah, how they what? look. They just end up as that little splash. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm sure yeah. you'll get lots of recruits to your online class. Um, <laughs> because yeah. a lot of people want to <laughs> learn how to do it. Well, they just need to, um, on my website, mm -hmm. pamdegroup.com. Yeah, yeah. So we'll, easy. We'll, we will share a link yeah. to that so they can go there. So just get onto the, um, the mail list and then I let everybody know whenever there's a, a release of a class. So this is the, the first thing we're doing. And then the next thing in this class you learn how to do is a spiral. And I, for those people who know me well, they know that I'm obsessed with spirals. So it was inevitable that one day I made my own spiral. And it was not an easy thing to do. I wanted to do a really big one and it was absolutely huge. Like it was about almost two meters diameter, the one that I started with. Mm -hmm. I mean, I did a little one first to see if it worked. And then and that's often how I work, is I make a little sample, mm -hmm. and that's always a good way to go, to make the sort of yes. sample that you want to do, and then you know, yeah, test it out before you commit to two metres of felting. And then you can bring it um, down, um, sorry, then you can explode it up into the scale that you want to work with. Mm -hmm. um, 
Unfortunately, I probably chose the wrong fibre in that one. You know, I learned a lot about what you can and can't do. I wanted to get a lot of shrinkage, which mm-hmm. I did because I use merino, but then it doesn't, it's kind of a flabby felt and it didn't mm. have the right structure for mm. a larger gotcha. item. Yes. Yeah, and I, I really should have used a different one. So it probably shrunk about 80%. Oh my gosh. Yeah. 80. 80%. So what would you have chosen on your larger piece? What type of fiber? Uh, for Well, in Australia, we're sort of limited by um, mm-hmm. in what kind of fibers we can go to. Um, so mainly Corydale or Romney mm-hmm. or something, something like that. Something just coarse, but also yeah. longer even, staple length. Well, not so much Our the length of this. tends to be. So Corydale, no, the Corydale is sort of long enough. Long enough. Um, I mean, it's longer. It, for us, it's longer than our merino, actually. Okay. Yeah. Well, not so much in Australia, but okay. Yeah, but it definitely is a stronger fiber mm-hmm. and coarser. Yes. You know, it's a much higher micron. It's so. a little more elbow grease. It does. It's <laughs> slow to felt, yeah. but when it felts, it's yes. really rock hard. So mm-hmm. that's that's what you want. You want something that's slow and firm. Exactly. Yeah, that gets that really sort of firm base. Mm-hmm. And so I use the Corridale a lot. Um, when I'm working on larger items, definitely that's my sort of go-to. Mm-hmm. It's the the fibre of it is easy to get, and um, yeah, and then I can just sort of work with it, mm-hmm. get it really strong. Yeah. Okay. Twist those around a little bit. What do you got there, Anne? <laughs> do, you, do you use any kind of stiffener? Uh, de- on bigger items, I do sometimes. Yeah. Um, it depends what I'm making and what the application is. Sometimes you can just use um, a PVA glue. I don't know if you have PVA glue here. It's a white glue, mm-hmm. and you can add water to that. I'm mm-hmm. just in a 50-50 mix. That's a good stiffener. Mm-hmm. Um, other than that, I'll use a millinery stiffener, which is um, a little bit stinky, yeah. but it's really mm-hmm. good. It really works very mm-hmm. well. So I'll use that um, on things. Uh, I don't know if people are seeing. I did a flower on a rock um, one. It's called... The piece is called Rock Bottom, and it has a great big flower on the top of it. Oh, I have to look for but that. It, the flower is really heavy and it's on a stem. Okay. So you can imagine it, it has wire in the middle of it, mm-hmm. but the wire wasn't enough. So I had to really stiffen that whole stem with um, millinery stiffener I ended up using mm-hmm. just to make it that really hard. Right. Because and the flower is quite heavy. Changes the hand though of the fiber. Oh, yeah. 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 That's the only thing for new people is often they want to keep the, you know, the soft felt, but once they apply those. Yeah fabric hardeners or stiffeners or glue yeah, yeah it's going to change the hand the which stiffener is, doesn't necessarily change the look of the fiber mm-hmm. though mm-hmm. Um, which oh, is good. good so that's the it looks the same but when yeah. you touch it it's like oh okay that's firm brush it on like with a paintbrush yeah 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 because yeah. mm-hmm. it's very do liquid. it in a very the millinery stiffener do it in a ventilated area yeah because it's not yeah you know, it's not it's not very nice <laughs> <laughs> Uh, now, do those start flat, your spirals? They start flat? They start flat and they start in pieces. Oh, okay. So we're going right, right. to learn how to do that mm-hmm. in the next few days. Well, pe- some people are very excited. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, they say they are so fun. They would make great pots for air plants. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, definitely. These shapes are amazing. So now, now that you've discovered the the spiral you started with something large have you done something else besides your with the spiral Uh well well, what you're learning with the spiral is you're learning about connections and what have you so Mm -hmm. yeah I've used those connections in different things Um, you know even making like little animals and what have you you can make all the components of your animal right so that you're getting everything in the right sort of direction and proportion Mm -hmm. rather than doing it a, a flat template Yes. Yes. Like. Yes. You're doing it in many templates, and then you can put things in the appropriate spots. Got it. So now that I'm firing on all yeah. cylinders. So this is more about the connections of the pieces yeah. than just the seashell book. The spiral I know. Itself. I yeah. mean, but Which but makes us all go. Spiral. It's kind of the attractive, you know. <laughs> now I want to make a snail shell, like a little <laughs> snail. <laughs> now, yeah. Now I'm very cool, very cool. Yeah, okay. and then um, the last technique we're going to learn is the what I call the twisty, and uh, yeah. So this little sample has has been all over the world. This one, and he's a bit worn out, um, but he gets sort of rubbed off in the in the luggage as it travels around, and he's a little bit flat today too. I should have bought a balloon so that I could blow him up again but you can see um, the technique allows for this wonderfully sort of sculpted almost like meringue 
on top of a lemon meringue pie kind of look. And um, it's really fun because it kind of, it's, it's a technique that takes you somewhere you're not necessarily expecting where to go. Because you start with a really odd shape and then you can end up with something completely different. So it's, it's really lots of fun, this one. And it's one where, you know, you get sort of squeals in the classroom because they're like, it's not working. And then you get this, oh, it's working, it's working, <laughs> which is really kind of fun. Um, and then this is actually the same technique, um, but just playing with the whole idea um, and, and cutting pieces away. It just looks completely different when you start to do that. Um, so this one, I'm actually going to be working on a piece um, for an exhibition that's not going to be on till two years time actually. Wow! But I'm working. I'm going to take this. I'm going to scale this right up and um, and have these inside one inside the other. And and so the concept for that one is all about emotional um, signatures. It's called emotional signatures. And, and just how we have to sort of think about things. Um, when we think about things that sort of trigger us, we could go down the path we always go, or we can go in different paths. So that's what that one's gonna be about. Oh. And I'm kind of excited to use this technique in that particular sculptural piece. So I, I like to try and use the ideas of mm -hmm. what I've got, and then I try and put them into a concept piece. That I'm working on. Mm -hmm. That sounds amazing. I can't wait mm. to see it. And where is that exhibit? In Australia? It, that will be in Australia. That'll travel around Australia. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, that's, no. yeah, that's that's going to be a, a long time off though. But I have to think. I have to think in advance because it takes me a long time to come up with an idea. <laughs> and I, I, you know, I get lots of ideas in, and then I just toss a lot out. And mm. it takes me a while to settle on something that I really sort of feel like I'm happy with. Um, and that whole exhibition is is titled Signatures. And it's oh. in, a, in a big group with a group of textile artists that exhibit, which is really good. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it's fantastic. It's going to be a really exciting. I love the title one. and the concept. That's, yeah. that's awesome. Yeah. And we've got this year, we've got one um, happening, which is found narrative. And I finished one piece for that one. Um, but I can't show anyone yet. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I've got to go home at the end of this trip and work on my next one and finish the, my next one off. Um, but that one's going to be really exciting as well. It's really interesting to to have this title to work to. It really sort of prompts you to work in a sort of, yeah, a different way than you might have otherwise worked right. because you have to sort of follow to the, to the name and mm -hmm. the title of the, the whole exhibition. Very cool. Yeah. Now you run in some other show and tells us. Well. I Can do. Can we show those to yeah, you? Yeah, please. Do you want the stack? Yeah, give me the stack. Okay. <laughs> I'll do, I'll do takeaway. Can you just talk us through your, your riches okay. there? So I'm going up um, north to Mendham to teach, so upper New York State. So um, I'm going to be doing mosaic work up there. And I've done mosaic work for a long time. And a lot of mosaics end up in my clothing. So this is, I use a lot of silk and wool as a prefelt in my work. So it can even end up on my sculptural work as well. Um, it just, you know, it just depends what I'm making. But this sort of base, and you can see it's really quite fine that I'm working with. Mm -hmm. So I'm making the pre-felts and then I dye them and then I can sort of put them into whatever I want to work with. And, and they really do change a lot. And I do a lot of hand dyeing of my fibre at home. Um, so this piece is a pre-felt that you dyed, if we can just, yeah, right? Yeah. So, and you did like a clamping or a binding technique as a resist, so yeah. they can see you, you just In made a white. Yeah. white. So you, it'll go into lots of different colors. So it started just as a white pre -felt, Yeah. Totally and then white. dyed, each color dyed yes. darker, darker, yeah. light to dark. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then this one's just an arashi, which is um, very simple shibori technique mm -hmm. on a great big pole. Um, and then I put that into the pot and, and dye that one. And this one comes out really interestingly. And it, it, you can get so many different effects using the same piece of dyed pre-felt, just depending on how you work it. So you can layer them up, you can, um, you can cut them into strips yes. and mm -hmm. what have you, and then you're ending up with little tiny stripes in this case. Mm -hmm. It's just a really interesting yeah. way to work. You can get really complex cloth 
with just a few pieces of pre-fill, mm -hmm. which is fantastic. And for those who aren't familiar, what she said was this is a pole wrapping technique, shibori pole wrapping technique, where you bind the fabric on the pole first mm -hmm. and with string, which will help act as a resist, the string, the space in between, mm -hmm. and then dip dye And you can dye see the it. line where the string was. Yeah. yeah, or you can paint it. You can dip dye it or paint mm -hmm. it. It doesn't yeah. matter. Yeah, so you just get that general bleed actually from this direction to that mm, direction yeah it's awesome and then just remember like this is going to shrink so this is all going to get yes. tighter yes and, and a little bit more complex like with well nano felting yeah. you take the fabric and make it unrecognizable so. so this is a piece of clothing that i've done with this technique so it's all just been connected together um so it's, it's good to have some plain areas all right so that you don't have just pattern 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 everywhere so it, it's it's, you have to kind of pull back all the time, pull back and just have the areas that are going to be of interest. Um, this is sort of nice using the stripe of the arashi around the edges. Um, it can be really fun to do that. And just layering up all of your different sort of complex areas, playing with the resist patterns that you get from the dyeing and then putting things inside things. I do this a lot. <laughs> That's sort of a bit of a signature of mine is to put things inside things, other shapes inside other shapes. And then this this ha ends up looking a little cleaner if you, in a way because this is just one layer of the pre -fill. So when we do that on the bags, which is what we're going to be doing up in Mendon is the bags. Okay, So we're going to learn how to make a bag with a pocket. Okay, So we've got a nice little pocket inside there so you can see there you could put a pocket on the outside you can have little clasps someone have you on the front um, and then the outside layer is going to be done in all of this mosaic -ing. so we're going to learn the dyeing out there as well oh, what a so they're going to do the whole shebang from mm. where to go so if anyone's interested in that you can just get in touch um, with me on my website yeah, you said there was an opening in that class, yeah. right? Somebody fell out, so it's like That's a right. last minute. We got last minute. Someone just had to pull out, mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, at the very last minute. So if anyone's interested and yeah. is up that way, New York State. Yeah, up yeah, New York State. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, just yeah, get in contact and I can put you in contact with the organizer. That's so cool. And so can we flip this over? Yeah. And let's Have just a look show the back. back a little bit. There's like yeah. Isn't that amazing? So there's a colour on the inside, which is why this is, gets a little yellowed off, but it depends on what colour you use. I've done um, other ones where you just have only one colour. So there's uh, the inside colour, and then the colour that you're dyeing with all of your pattern is also just one colour, and that mm. can be really effective I as agree. Well. Yes, because it's all like over-dyed, over-dyed mm. fabrics and over-dyed, yeah. Mm. Awesome. Yeah. Love that. Yeah, no, it's really mm, That fun. effect. Now, how many days is this class? So this class is four days. Yeah, because you've like got the it dyeing. Be. Yeah, yeah, you've got the dyeing in there as well. So someone asked, and I think you know, some people Pam just work in such small scale, but they mm -hmm. ask, how do you make such a big piece of fabric? So like, when you make that single piece of fabric, mm -hmm. are, are you on like a double table or what? You know, what's your setup when you? Well, I that? am on at home. Uh -huh. I do have two enormous big tables, but um, you can totally do it on on something smaller. So long as you've got the length. So, you know, you might want to have something as, well, you need to have it as wide as your fabric. But then the mm -hmm. rest of your fabric can just tip off the yeah. edge of the table. Scroll and roll. Yeah. So, so long as your bubble wrap is long enough. Yeah. You, or whatever you're using <laughs> yes. underneath. Yes. So long as that's long enough, it can all just be off the table. You right. can just, yeah, you can just work on the bit that you've got, put, you know, squeeze that out, get the, all the water out of that one, roll it up, start on the next section. And you can do some enormous big things. Mm -hmm. On yeah. a very small area. Mm -hmm. yeah. Agreed. Yeah. yeah, very cool. So now I'm gonna I'm gonna turn the the camera up now and tell us maybe what's your what you you said you're working on some pieces for your next exhibit, but like currently, what's your favorite thing to felt? Like maybe if it's felt therapy day for Pam, what, <laughs> you know, like okay. what would you go make? Look, I just I love working with the um, sort of Uzbek silk mm. stuff mm -hmm. and. Um, I'll make those some scarves. So they're sort of like a relatively quick. I won't mm -hmm. say that they're quick. They're a relatively quick item that I can sort of make without mm -hmm. having to get a whole lot of stuff out. I just get that silk out. Oh. <laughs> I 
I just knock something. I'm just too. <laughs> I must be Italian somewhere. I've got my arms working. Um, yeah. So I I just love to sort of spread out the silk mm-hmm. and and then just get into it, just working with little strands of the merino and just playing with that because the way that Uzbek silk pulls up is just mm-hmm. beautiful it really distresses and mm-hmm. I have fun doing that mm-hmm. um, well the other thing for me is uh, working with jewelry I love to work if I particularly if I've been working on something really big and in, and sort of absorbing mm-hmm. um, to come back and just work small right. on a piece of jewelry it's mm-hmm. really good and it just sort of centers me and and Sort of, you know, calms me down a bit, I suppose. I that's for some of it. us, that's needle felting. Like for okay. those of us who needle felt, like when I said, like, yeah, for me, it's like after, do you needle felt for therapy too, Kimberly too? Yeah, it's like quiet time, it's yeah. simple, it's small, pick it up, put it down. But mm. sa- it's that same thing. It's yeah, like, yeah. For some people, spin for therapy, I think, you know, just mm. do the same thing. Well, having said that, I mean, I can take two or three days on a piece of jewelry. Right. But it's not physically... Yeah. So, so demanding as, as working on something big mm-hmm. yeah but I've been just sort of really this year has been all about the coil I've been working on making so many pieces from coils lately it's just been a really nice thing to follow through with mm-hmm. and just sort mm-hmm. of see where it takes me and it's been really interesting where it's taken me just working on coils cool and uh, just making lots and lots of coils and then just doing stuff with them yeah it's really interesting mm-hmm. we call I call them snakes I think you mean like these like yeah, r- r- yeah. I, call, I call it a snake but I say or, or a, a cane or a cord. We call, yeah, yeah yeah same thing mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah cool yeah. Cool. Well, we're just so excited to have you here, Pam. Well, Thanks thank for you. making us a stop in your U.S. trip. Yeah, so. no, well, I'm, I've been having such a good time here <laughs> in Texas. Really, I have. Well, we're going to share. We look forward to. We're, we'll definitely take some photographs during the workshop days. And um, for those of you who can't be here and already shared a link to Pam's website, and so some of what we're learning in her class, you can take her online class and you have interaction there and community support too because yeah. people post and share their work. Yeah. So that's a really fun opportunity. So even if you can't wonderful. get it firsthand. Yeah, yeah. And it's, it's great to get, um, what I love is that it's um, available to people who wouldn't otherwise be yeah. able to come to a face-to-face class not only because of the geographical reasons, but because they've got young kids or yeah. because they're not, you know, they can't stand there all day and work. But totally. these people can totally do Or people who just work a lot. Online or work a lot. <laughs> they yeah. can totally do the online workshop. And, yeah. and it's a really um, supportive community, I find, in each of these classes. They really look after each other, which is fantastic. Yeah. And that's what I mean. Felting people are lovely. Yeah, they are. Fiber people are amazing. Yeah. yeah. And it's our same motivation for starting our online school this year, too. It's just, mm. yeah, giving yeah. people that outlet and for yeah, sure the way to learn it's cool. really good cool well i promise to share more of more of pam's <laughs> workshop uh, what we've done and what we make yes. and and maybe we'll do some more bff show and tells too because we have some of our friends coming and we're even shooting a video next week for our online school so that's good. exciting too so y'all just a big round of heart for for pam i lost my uh, my tablet over here died on <laughs> Pam, thank you so much for thank being you. our guest and, and showing us your thank show you and so tells. much for having yeah, I love it, love it, love it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I know that you all are very excited now seeing seeing all these wonderful samples from both Pam and Kimberly. And um, we have some fun stuff coming up. I shared our I shared our upcoming calendar, which is next week we're going to do our kitty and the, well you can do whatever. We're gonna do blending hand blending fibers and we're gonna do silhouettes on a full moon. So you might do a tree or a peacock or a couple or whatever. It's a very simple needle felting project that anybody can do. And the week after that, we're planning to do our night owl. uh, And I posted a picture for that. So that's going to be a wet felting project. And it's going to be wet felting over a resist. It's very simple. It's very beginner friendly. But if you have never wet felted at all, please go to our YouTube channel and see the pancake lesson. And that is just introductory, basic wet felting, at least make a flat sheet. And then if you've never wet felted over a resist, see our wet felting, you can choose. We either have a wet felting a vessel, which is nothing more than a simple bowl over a round shape, or you could do our wrist warmers. In the wrist warmers, we work with merino top, and in the vessel, we work with our MC1. 
For the kitty, you could work with core wool, the, I mean the kitty, the uh, night owl. You could work with core wool, which would take a little more effort. You could work with the merino short fiber bats, which will felt up super quick. Um, you could work with New Zealand Coriadale, which we were just talking about with Pam. You could work with our MC1 batting. You can pretty much use what you have, and you'll only need like less than two ounces because we want to make it very thin so that there's plenty of room for the light to come through. Um, and that could even be a nanofelt project, actually, but we're just going to use wool. So check that out. We shared uh, Night Owl and the Kitty Over the Full Moon on last Wooly Wednesday. And if you're brand new to us, I hope that you'll up in the top corner hit that bell so you get notified anytime we go live on video. And if you're watching the playback on YouTube, make sure you hit the subscribe button. And we always upload these to YouTube, so they're under our Wooly Wednesday playlist. And if we do a wet felting demo, it goes under wet felting tutorials. If we do a needle felting demo, it goes to needle felting tutorials. And that's how we roll. How are we doing, Anne? Are there any last minute questions or thoughts? Nope. Okay, so we're going to do um, some giveaways. I'm going to do, do you see my little llama? Would you, I'm going to grab my, would you look on my desk and grab my llama? So a couple of weeks back, we started our No Prob Llama tutorial where we needle felted a simple little llama and we shared the image transfer technique. And I was slow to finish my ornament. Y'all might remember I did a little 60%. I think it was 60% uh, shrink down of the llama. So I made a little ornament or like, I don't know, car dangler of him. So I'll share that. If y'all haven't seen that, I hope you'll, yeah, that's it. <laughs> He's so goofy. <laughs> okay, I'll show him to you and then I'll turn him down. So this is my little uh, miniature ornament that I made uh, from our little tutorial that we did together. And um, for those of you who don't, who didn't watch that you should and if you're if you just want to needle felt a little bit let me just zoom in and show him to you it's so so simple i basically just needle felted two of the little llamas and glued them together and then ran yarn this is just embroidery floss around him and then made a little pom-pom and that could be fun on your christmas tree or in your car or as a gift to a friend we also turned him into uh, an iron-on transfer or you could needle felt him right on denim so that was just a, a fun little project that we did together our no problema and then later this week also or not this week but later this year we're going to do actually a needle felt and sew project with a pillow so i hope you guys will tune in watch more and we're just so grateful for Pam and Kimberly doing show and tells with us today and sharing us with us more about their felting adventure. So the fairies are back. We're going to give away some prizes, which is always a fun part of the day. So y'all come on in. What happens is now is anyone who's contributed to the conversation during the show, maybe you asked a question, maybe you shared an idea or a thought, your name went into a bowl <laughs> and we're going to give away some prizes. Okay. Kayla. Oh, I can <laughs> Claire Forrester. Yay! Yeah. I'll help you, Anne. Oh, okay. Thank I'll you. Hold, I'll hold the magic basket. Okay. Claire, you win one 100% oh. wool felt sheet and an MC1 goodie bag. Oh, that's fun. Awesome. <laughs> so that would be good for needle felting. Now, what are we doing? We have something coming up where we're needle felting more. What is it? Oh, like the, sorry, the, like, the, <laughs> like the whole man next week. Come on in here, Holly, a little Wasn't bit. Wasn't ready for the tough questions. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. You're gonna go first. <laughs> Teresa Lawton. Yay! Yay! <laughs> Woohoo! Teresa, you win in MC1 Studio Pack. Woo! So we have like 10 or 12. We have, yeah, 10. we have lots of varieties. You could choose monochrome, berry, scenic, like more Christmassy, more fall, whatever you want. So look under the MC1 batting and just let us know which one you want. <laughs> Fun. Okay. Marie, do you want to pick? No, I'll hold the bowl. Okay. I've been talking in that. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Shin J. Sherry J. Sherry, sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I, I don't have my glasses on. Yay! Yay, <laughs> Sherry! Yay! Um, Sherry, you win a piece of our resist and then some merino short fiber bat. Perfect mm -hmm. for making the kitty Marie talked about. Oh, yeah. Except you might not want to make him black if he's going to be a light. 
True. Yeah. yeah. But hey, you know what? Last Halloween, did we show that last Halloween? We made the kitty. Remember, we made the black kitty cat. Doorstop? I'll have to bring. Yeah, <laughs> kitty. No, not kitty not doorstop. Kitty, doorstop. kitty shelf setter. Yeah. Sitter. We made a black, a big black cat, like for Halloween. We'll yeah. bring him in next time, and you can see him. So use black, but not for your light. You need yeah. white, white or yellow or orange for your night light. Not black or blue. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Y'all, thank you for hanging out with us today. We appreciate you being here so much. Make sure you subscribe and treat yourself really, really well this week. You deserve it. We appreciate you. Bye, y'all. Say bye. bye. <laughs>